So I'm going to show you how to set up the tension uh, testing that we're going to need to do on your chicken tendons. And so in order to do that, I'm going to basically test this piece of uh, latex or nitrile glove that we have. Um, and so that might be something you guys want to do too, instead of just jumping straight to the chicken tendons and then finding out that you have your test set up and ruining a chicken tendon. Uh, test it out uh, first on something that you don't care about, like, or even just do it on the air, uh, just to make sure that the thing's moving correctly. All right, so we're going to start setting up our method. And so the way we're going to do this for just straight uh, tension test, right? Basically a pull to failure test, we're going to select the tension method. And like I said before, we're going to skip over about 90% of the options that are in here. So we don't need to worry about the general, the sample, the specimen, the measurement. We don't have to worry about calculations. Right? What we're really interested in is in test control. And specifically, we want to know how the test is going to run and then what's going to cause the test to end. So this test and end of test. And so how the test is going to run is displacement. Right? We're going to pull at some rate um, until we hit the end of test conditions. And so really, thinking about the rate you want to pull at is pretty important. Uh, so if I'm just looking at this piece of rubber glove, I think by the time I get in the grip, there's about an inch in there, so that's about 25 millimeters. So you know, if I like pulled it about that amount, 25 millimeters per minute, that's probably good. Why not? It's a good a good starting place. You know, once I get it in there, it may be too fast or too slow, and we'll figure that out. And then we'll want to set the end of the test. And so the one thing that uh, is always default on here is the the force rate drops to 40%. And so that basically means that the thing has broken. Okay, so that's, that's one way to end the test, is that your sample has broken. Uh, the other thing I always want you guys to include is something to protect the load cell. Uh, so our load cell is a one kilonewton. And so what I'm gonna do is set one of the ends of test so that we never get near that. So I'm gonna set to measurement level and force. And if our force ever gets to 0.8 kilonewtons, it will stop the test. And that will protect our load cell of one kilonewton, so it'll never get above 0.8. Okay, so those are kind of the two defaults that I always want you to have. Then you may think about what you want the end of test uh, to really be, like if you're, we're just pulling for a little bit and we want to do the stress strain on the elastic region. Um, and so I'm going to set measurement level. Like we could use displacement here we could use time, like we want to pull it for a minute, right? We've put in a minute. Um, we could also do the same thing with displacement, right? We know it's running at 25 millimeters a minute, so if I want it to run for a minute, I can put 25 millimeters on here. But let's go ahead and make it fairly quick. So I'll make this basically 30 seconds by making uh, it half of 25 millimeters, right? So this is going to pull this sample uh, for 12.5 millimeters, and that will end it. Okay, that's pretty much all you have to do. You don't have to worry about anything else other than test and end of test. And then we'll go to console. Right, and so the console's kind of the display that's going to happen. The one thing I suggest you change is the, the units of force up there are in kilonewtons. And so we definitely want to have a better visualization of what's going on. So I just, I'll put newtons to three decimal places as our display. Um, just because the kilonewtons, like our forces just aren't going to be above one kilonewton, right? Like we already said the max is going to be 0.8. So just seeing it in newton seems to be a better thing to do. Um, again, not much else you have to worry about there. Then we go to workspace. Again, this is a lot of things we don't need. The one thing that we're really concerned about is raw data. And we want to make sure it's outputting the raw data correctly. Okay, it's going to output time, displacement, and force, but what we really want to do is make sure these are the right units. And so again, we want to output the force in units of newtons, not kilonewtons. And again, I'll just do three decimal places on the newtons. Okay, so that's really important to make sure you change this raw data to output um, to newtons rather than kilonewtons. And then we go to exports, right? And so this is where we're going to export to you know, you can choose whatever folder you want. I think using the desktop for this is fine. Um, and then uh, we're going to look at the reports. 
right? So the reports is basically a PDF file of the graphs and the calculations you do. We don't care about that. We're doing our own calculations. What we do care about is the export. We want to make sure we export the data we want. We want to export the raw data. Um, so I changed the frequency from on demand to after each test to make sure that we don't forget to export it. Um, it's going to be a CSV file. And then the thing we do want to output, it shows kind of a preview down here. We don't really care about these results tables. Right, those are like any calculations we've done. What we really want to export is our raw data. So our time, our force, and our displacement. And so you'll check on to export raw data. These other things you don't need. Export to, if you wanted to export a different file, you could do that. Um, but we're gonna focus on just one export file of the raw data. Okay, so all you need to do to set this up, again, test control, you do test and end of test. Under the workspace, you need to make sure the raw data is outputting forces newtons, and under exports, you need to make sure you're exporting the raw data after every test. Right, and then after that, we have set up our, our uh, method, so we can go ahead and save that. So I'm gonna say save method. Um, you know, it likes to have things output into this Bluehoo Universal. I think I'll just put it on the desktop. So the important thing here is it's just easier to find. Um, I'll just call this tension. Uh, and then, you know, you can delete these files after you're done and clean it up. Okay, so we've done that. We've saved it. We can go back to the home screen now. Okay, and so now we just want to use, we're going to use this method to do the test. So I'm going to click on test. Uh, there's, you know, maybe a couple methods that show up depending on what previous users have done. So I spelled tension wrong. I just put T-E-S-N, but that's the one I want. Um, it's going to give us this warning about setting the crosshead travel limits, and that's basically to prevent the machine from, like, running into stuff. Uh, there's these yellow things on the side that you could, um, basically, if the, this black bar runs into the yellow things, it will stop the test. We don't necessarily have to worry about that because I've already set those, um, so as long as they're not moved, you don't have to worry about it. So I'll say, okay. Then it takes a second, but eventually it will get to the point where it's ready for testing. And so now what we want to do is load the sample in our grips. And so I'm just going to load this in here and tighten the grips on it. This is actually an important part. You want to make sure you have your, your sample loaded nice and straight. tight on the grips. And now we want to like be able to move this down. And so what I'm going to try to do is move the crosshead down using these arrows. But you can see the thing is disabled and the, the screen even tells us that jog action can't be performed with frames disabled. Right? So we need to unlock the frame so that it can be moved. So we hit this unlock button and it goes from disabled to setup. And so now we can move this down and so I'm going to move the grips out of the way and move this piece down enough where I can now grip in the lower piece. Okay, so we have it set up. I want to make sure I get it at just the right amount of tension. Actually, I feel like this is pretty good, so I'm even going to take even like, so if I had some extra tension on it, right, where that's not, it's not really anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be paying close attention to the force. I'll even zero out the force here. And I'll just move this up slowly. Right, and I start seeing a little bit of force, so I'm, I'm pretty convinced now that, okay, it's, like, even when I touch it on the side, you can see the force jump up. So it's a pretty good uh, starting testing location. Okay, so now that we have the sample set up uh, and we're ready to run this, I'm gonna go ahead and zero out the force again. 
I'm going to go ahead and zero out the displacement and now we're ready to run. And so what's going to happen to be able to run is you have to unlock it and then you have to hit this play button um, in pretty quick succession for it to happen. So if I just hit the unlock button, it'll go into this caution mode, but I didn't hit the play button close enough so it goes back to setup. And so what I need to do is hit unlock and play really quick. And we'll go into testing mode and you can see it's starting to pull. It's hard to see it actually pulling, but you can see our force versus displacement. Right, and we're expecting this to pull to 12.5 millimeters and then touch to stop. Okay, and so you can see the max force was about uh, t 6 newtons, so that's why we definitely wanted to change it from um, kilonewtons to newtons. And then we just save our file, right? This is the uh, export that we want to save, so we're going to save it as SAMP1. Uh, and so we're, we're pretty much done. The one thing we do want to do is return it back to its original position. And so the way to do that is using this, I guess, rewind button. And so again, you hit the unlock button first and then the rewind and it will go back down to its original position. And so you can see that this rubber glove got stretched out uh, a little bit uh, by that, that tension test. And so that's fine. Um, but that's the results. And so if we just want to see where they're at, we can just go to this CSV file on the desktop. Um, I'll just open it in Notepad. It's a, Excel's not on here, but we can see that we do have time displacement and force and that's something we can analyze later so I would encourage you guys to just take those files and save them off to your Google Drive or whatever and that's all it takes to do uh, tension testing.